I started off by learning to fence, and I was a competitive fencer when I was about 16 uh, in Australia. And then I um, discovered the acting bug. We had people in the family who were in the theatre. So I came back from Australia, went to drama school over here for three years, discovered I wasn't a very good actor, but uh, in fact kept the fencing going all the time. And I was working at the National Theatre, uh, a member of the company, and then started being given fights to do. In fact, the first one I ever did was Zeffirelli's Romeo and Juliet, which taught for two years all over the world. And I discovered there was a gap there. Really, nobody had specialised in the theatre in this uh, particular part of theatre. Um, later on, of course, uh, it was the same with uh, many aspects of theatre. The director would be the director, the lighting chap would also be the director, and uh, actors did a lot as well. Nowadays you have specialists in everything, whether it's lighting or costume, or whatever, but there was a gap in this a niche to be filled in this particular area, because if you think back to old Hollywood, uh, in those days you had, uh, particularly in the swashbuckling films, you would have fencing masters choreographing for those wonderful Gene Kelly and Errol Flynn fights. But what you were actually seeing was fencing adapted to film. So that a lot of uh, pure fencing moves went in, a lot of repetitive moves went in, whereas nowadays I would try to make, uh, give as much variety to the choreography of the blade play as possible. You didn't see an awful lot of that at the time um, in the Hollywood films. They were, they were spectacular, they were wonderful. Um, pieces of spectacle, really, more than to do with characters. So I was keen to fill in to do with characters. I was keen, keen to make it more realistic, uh, the fighting that was done in the period films. And was just fortunate enough, very fortunate, to be given the opportunity to do it. You, you can read stories of a duel that started at sunrise, finished at sunset, and both men walked away at the end of it with, you know, I mean, one might have 20 wounds and he lived, uh, some of his ears bitten off and he lived. What they were doing, they certainly couldn't have been fighting non-stop, they'd, they'd be, you know, out of breath on the ground very quickly. If you're doing it in a film, of course it's got to be interesting and exciting. You couldn't have nothing happening from sunrise to sunset, it wouldn't go down very well. It, it allows freedom, of course, for people like me too, and the actors to develop something which works for the cinema, which works not for the cinema, for the story and the plot. And of course, we can make it dramatic, whereas probably in the reality it wasn't very dramatic. The amount of responsibility when you're dealing with leading actors and the whole film will collapse if you have an accident and one of them has to go to hospital or something, it is tremendous responsibility and all that money involved too if that happens. But never mind that, nobody wants anything to happen to any actor, whether they're leading or non-leading. We don't want accidents to happen. At the same time, you're treading a tightrope because you're trying to get the best, fastest, whatever, most dangerous looking fight possible. So we have two contrasting things going on. One is the safety aspect, which is there, and at the same time, you're trying to produce something, uh, a finished result in the fight sequence, which is absolutely, you know, mind-blowing, which will surprise the audience, make them sit up, and that means pushing the actors a little bit into an area where things can go wrong. But of course, you cover with um, rehearsal time, as much rehearsal time as possible. The moves are choreographed in such a fashion that they are not in inherently in themselves dangerous, although anything can become dangerous if, if uh, a sword is wielded by one of our leading actors has been out on the razzle one night, you know? <laughs> I hate the fact that now pieces of action are done for the sake of pieces of action. Whether it's a dance routine or a fight routine or whatever it happens to be, is made in the editor's room. So whatever you do, this, this idea now of very fast cutting from move to move, it started in Braveheart, in the Battle of Braveheart. One move, cut away. One move, cut away. So actually the choreography is almost becoming irrelevant, which is re really sad. I don't think we're interested in the people anymore. I mean, if you think about a film I did years ago, um, Three Musketeers, Richard Lester's Three Musketeers, it was wonderful because you cared about the characters. When they fought, you cared about them. The swordplay wasn't made in the editing. Of course, things are enhanced and made better, but 
it wasn't to do with quick cutaways for the editor to decide how to make it exciting. That was our job, to do the best we could. Of course, with the editor's help, afterwards, and the director doing the editing and so on. But um, this fast cutaway is, is a real, uh, sorry, killer, as they say. <laughs>